Let's look at factoring four terms by grouping. So I've got this example here. It does have four terms. We want to group this off into pairs. So I got my first pair here, and then the 6x and the 15 are going to be the second pair. For each of these pairs, I'm going to look for a GCF. The GCF is the greatest common factor. What goes into both of my terms? So when I look at the blue pair, my GCF, let's see what goes into 2 and 5. Nothing. So I'll look at those coefficients first. Let's look at the x's next. What goes into both x cubed and x squared? And we get x squared. To do the next step, I'm going to divide both of these terms by x squared. And I'm dividing them out because I'm factoring. I'm going to actually put the x squared out in front. Let's see what we've got left in those parentheses. x squared goes into x cubed, and it leaves me with a single x left. There were three, we canceled two of them. Um, plus five just stays, and then I've got x squared over x squared. Those cancel completely, and I get five. Let's next look for the GCF in the second pair. So the GCF, I'm going to look at my coefficients first. What goes into both 6 and 15? Now you might play around with your calculator a little bit. Um, they're not both even, but it does turn out that 3 goes into both of these. And then I look at the variable. There's an x in the first, but not in the second. They don't share a variable. All I can factor out here is the 3. So I'm going to divide both of these terms by 3, it's a positive 3. And because this is a polynomial, I want to record that sign, positive 3. So that positive 3 is going to come out in front, so I get plus 3. And let's go ahead and cancel for the um, quantity inside. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and then I've got my x. 15 divided by 3 is 5, plus 5. Now, it is no coincidence that we end up with the same exact quantity in parentheses. This is going to happen every single time for you if the polynomial factors. And that's really going to help us shortcut this in the next example. Now, I'm not quite there yet. I still need to factor out this common factor. So I do have a common factor now of the x or the 2x plus 5. So so I'm going to divide both terms by the 2x plus 5, um, 2x plus 5. So that 2x plus 5 comes out in front, 2x plus 5 in parenthesis. I've canceled it from the first, which leaves me with the x squared. So in parentheses, I've got the x squared, and I canceled that from the second group, leaving me with a plus 3, plus 3. Three. Now I take a quick look and make sure there's nothing else that I can factor further. 2x plus 5, x squared plus 3. There's nothing that I can factor further, and this is my answer. Let's do another one. So I have another four terms here. Notice how I've written it in descending order, x cubed, x squared, x, and then my constant, that number one in the end. This is a good rule of thumb. Sometimes you have to switch the middle two, but this one is great and ready for me to pair off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pair off the first group and that second pair. And I'm looking for a GCF. What divides into the coefficients in the blue group? Uh, let's see, 12 and 4, they're both even, so definitely 2, but 4 will go into both of these as well. So my GCF is going to include a 4, and then I look at the power of x. They both have an x term, so I get an x squared here. Next, let's look at the green pair. Okay, so what goes into both 3 and 1? Nothing other than 1, and they don't share an x but I do need the number one as a placeholder, and I'm gonna use a positive one. You're gonna see why here in just a second. Okay, let's divide everybody so I can start this factorization. In the first pair, I'm dividing by 4x squared, 4x squared. That's gonna come out in front, so I get 4x squared, and then what am I left with? 12 divided by four is three. I had three x's, I'm canceling two of those, so I get a single x left, 
and then the 4x squared cancels with the 4x squared. Something divided by itself is 1. Take a look at what we have here, right? 3x plus 1. I can see that I'm almost there, but I'm going to use that placeholder. So technically, I'm dividing everybody by 1, which isn't very exciting, but still I need this so I can get to that final step. So I'm gonna factor the one out, which doesn't change anybody, and I still get the three X plus one. Okay, again, no coincidence that I ended up with the three X plus one. Let's go ahead and factor that out in front. So I get three X plus one. In the parentheses, I get 4x squared plus 1. I do a quick check to make sure that I can't uh, factor anybody further, and I can't, so this is our factorization. Let's move on to the next one, and I'm going to show you a little bit of a shortcut. In this one, again, I've got four terms and I have some different variables. So it's tougher to put this one in descending order, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it grouped as it was given to me. Okay, so I've got my two pairs here. I promised I was going to show you a shortcut and that one's coming up. I'm going to look for my GCF for this first pair. So I'm going to start with those coefficients. What goes into both 35 and 5? 35 is divisible by 5, so I can go ahead and use 5 for my GCF. And then I'm going to look at what variables they share. They don't both have a Y, but they do both have 1 X. So I've got the 1 X there. For my second pair, I'm actually not going to worry about the GCF yet. I'm going to factor first. This is where the shortcut comes in. So let's go ahead and work with a 5x. So I'm going to take that 5x and factor it out in front. So I get a 5x. I'm canceling or dividing. 35 divided by 5 is 7. I can cancel the x's and I get a y. Next, I've got minus 5x divided by 5x. So I know something divided by itself is 1, and I've got that minus sign in front. Now, because I am factoring by grouping, I know that I need the second set of parentheses to match. I also need a 7y minus 1. This is going to help me decide what GCF to use. So what GCF do I need? Um, I do need an 8. 8 divided by 8, that's supposed to be an 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1, but I actually need that to be a negative 8. So let me just rewrite that so you can actually read my writing. I need a negative 8. 8 divided by negative 8. We can go ahead and do a quick double check here. So 8 divided by negative 8 works. And then negative 56 divided by negative 8. 56 divided by 8, and you could use your calculator if you needed it, does get me to a positive 7, and the y is left. And I don't want to forget to record the negative 8 out in front. So a really nice way to make sure that you're getting to that quantity um, inside to match. Okay, so I've got this matching set of parentheses. I can factor that out in front, 7y minus 1. And then what am I left with? I'm left with a 5x inside the parenthesis and a negative 8 inside the parenthesis. Neither of these factor further, so I've got my solution. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to group 3 together and 1. Our goal for that one's going to be a difference of squares. So let's look at another type of grouping. In this next one, and it might take a little bit of trial and error and just some practice so that you can recognize this, I do have, and I'm going to put this all in blue here, this is a trinomial perfect square. And I recognize that in two ways. I recognize that because I have an x squared in front, and my last term is also a perfect square. It happens to be 2 squared. The other way that I can recognize that I'm going to factor this one different is because I also have a perfect square on the end with a minus sign. So I'm subtracting, let's see, that would be a 5 and a y squared. So I've got a couple of perfect squares in here. So my goal is going to be to group this as 3, and this first group is going to be um, my trinomial perfect square. So this is a perfect square trinomial. And then I'm going to factor using the difference of squares. Okay, so watch how I do this. I'm going to work with that first group. Um, that first group, I can go ahead and factor this one. I need 
x times x in the first position. And if you haven't yet factored trinomials, take a look at the link down in my description. There's a couple of great videos there for you to watch. To get to the four on the end, four is two times two. So I'm gonna do a plus two and a plus two. I can do a quick check to make sure that the middle works out. 2x plus 2x is 4x. Continuing to simplify that blue group, I end up with x plus 2 quantity squared. Now I'm really just tagging along this second minus 25y squared. So I'm just going to bring that down, minus 25y squared minus 25y squared. Now what I have is a difference of squares, and I know that I can factor a squared minus b squared into whatever got squared, their sum, a plus b, times their difference, a minus b. So in this example, a is equal to what I've got in blue, so a is equal to x plus two, and b is equal to what I've got in green there. It was a five that was squared and a y that was squared, so five y. So I'm identifying what the a and the b are, and then I can dive right into my factorization. So I need a, plus b, and then a minus b. Okay, so here comes a. a is x plus 2 plus b, we're going to do that first, plus 5y, and then again x plus 2 minus 5y. There's actually just maybe a tiny bit of cleaning up that I can do. Not really a lot here, but let me go ahead and write this as my answer. I'm going to write x. I'm going to do the variable terms first, plus 5y plus 2. The order really doesn't matter. And then x minus 5y plus 2. And that is our factorization. You've got this. Take a look at the links for more videos or watch the one that I've got here.